Good morning and welcome to FYI. For your information, it is the 8th day of January already. It is good to be back. It's good to have all of you who are joining us. Believe it or not, it's the 8th day of January, but it's our very, very first broadcast for the new year. Happy New Year, Edward Brooms and all the other folks who are joining us this morning. Great to have you guys on with us. We're going to make sure, first and foremost, as you always do, that we are shared to all the credible and valid places. Great to have all of you who are joining us this morning. Great to have you guys with us. And as you know, we always say, you all know the things we always say. Share the live. Smash that emoji button for us, guys. Smash it. Clear Alexis Charmley Richmond. Good to have you there with us. And the other folks who are joining with Claire, good to have you guys with us as well. We want to see those um, emojis. We want to know how you guys are feeling this morning out there. Do let us know. Uh, Petal Thorne and Margaret, good to have you folks. Um, we're not 100% where we want to be, but folks, we're going to make do with what we have. Great to see you. Margaret Nelson, Margaret and Rio. Good to have you folks. Hope you had a great holiday and we're fired up and ready to go for this new year. Jennifer, Bob is here. Good to have you, Jennifer. Good to have you, Sean of Fortune as well. I see we got Joyce, Prince Kingston, Silbert Stewart. Good folks, all the good folks with us, guys. I am very, very happy to let you know. I'm very happy and privileged to let you know. I've got my own cup now. <laughs> From a from a it's it's so white, it's so much white on white. It's a let me bring on this side too. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a big auntie from uh down there in Atlanta, Georgia. A nice big auntie. <laughs> a nice big auntie. You know, it's 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 good to have your own things, you know. I want your I'm a boy with my things. I'm a boy with my things. Don't come around me funny in 2024. Luan Hall, good to have you there. I almost said 2021. I want to go back, but it's forward level, folks. Backward never. Alexis Williams, we see you there. Ingrid King, Dorette Edinburgh, we see you as well. And Andrew Griffith, happy new year to you, Andrew, and your family. Camille Cox, hardworking counselor there in Region 6. Good to have you, Camille and Philip. Good to have Philip as well. I want to say a special good morning. To all our folks there in region number nine, folks, I am uh, just back, just back from region number nine and had such a, a great, fantastic time. You know, we got to get the valid, credible information. Yeah, valid, credible information. Lots of things are happening in this country, folks, and we want you guys to know all about it. We want you folks to know all about it. So I want to say a special good morning to all our hardworking counselors like Camille Cox. Hardworking counselors there in region number nine. I want to say good morning to uh, George Nicholson, Lillian Joseph, Marlon Edwards, uh, Tanita Barreto. I want to say good morning to those our very, very hard working counselors there in region nine again marla nichols and following my notes lillian joseph i don't want to miss a name marlon edwards and tahinita Bretto, hard-working counselors like camille cox there in region nine and folks you hear a lot of stuff happening and that's why we gotta go you know to where margaret is there in uh, somerville north carolina to make sure what people say is happening is happening you know, people say, Margaret, you have a big house, a big estate, and so on. We want to make sure, and that's why we went. Finel Innes, Magnel Barrow, uh, uh, Paula Mendez, Loretta Argyle. You know, we got the Argyle Declaration. Finel, you know, you'll be, sorry. Loretta, you didn't know you'd be so famous. Yeah? Loretta Argyle, <laughs> Terrence, Terrence Beaton. Good to have you, Terrence, and uh, Lyndon Gill. Jennifer, of course, and Yolanda Thomas. Good to have each and every one of you folks. Looking forward to this new year with you guys. 
as we pursue the valid and credible information. Uh, good to have <laughs> Redman Alexis is on with us as well. Vashti Pollard is here uh, from on the East Bank. Stan Bourne is here with us as well, folks. Smash that emoji button as you come on. You know, we wanted to get some rest during the uh, holidays, but yeah, you know how it goes. We got a little of it, got a little bit, but we were in Let Him, folks. And in this broadcast and subsequent broadcasts, we're going to unpack some of what we saw in Let Him, some of our engagement with our uh, brothers and sisters there in the uh, hinterland. We went to Let Him, we got into uh, Mukka Mukka, we went to um, Karasabai and Tiger Pond. Uh, saw some places there. It's a, folks, we have a huge country. A huge country. And folks, in every corner of this country, them boys trying something. <laughs> them boys trying something. Sheena Hazel, but we're going to stay on them. We're going to stay on them and try to keep them honest. Good to have all of you folks here with us. Veronica Primo Rollins, I see you there as well. Happy New Year to you guys too. Edward and all of you, Elizabeth and Ramon and the kids and the extended family. All of your families, guys. We wish you all a Happy New Year. I hope you all don't fall off of the, um, you haven't fallen off of the, what do you call it? The resolution bandwagon is yet. You know, we made our resolutions, Cheryl Glenn and Eric Williams. Amita Carroll, I hope you guys haven't fallen off as yet. You know, I'm reading Atomic Habits. I've had it on my virtual book stand, um, in my Kindle book stand for a little while. And I, I'm on my second book for the year, folks. What are you reading? <laughs> what are you wonderful, beautiful folks reading? I just finished uh, How Democracies Die. Fantastic book. We can talk about some of that on another broadcast. How Democracies Die. Folks, it's like a framework. It's like a model for what's happening here. An international bestseller, How Democracies Die. Just finished that, folks. I started it, I think, on the 2nd. And I started Atomic Habits uh, just last evening. You know, me one, make a whole set of resolutions, and then I you know, break them up and shatter them. And so this book talks about, you know, how you can inculcate good habits. What you have to do to make sure that you stick to your plan. You make your plan, then you stick to your plan. Vanessa De Silva. <laughs> I want to do that. Yep, I want to do it. Folks, thanks for all the contributions that I see coming in, especially on, um, I see coming in on YouTube. Thank you so much. Uh, Donetta George, sorry, Donet George. Thank you so much for your contribution. Yolanda, Yolanda Thomas, thank you for your contributions as well. Folks, I am so happy that to see you folks this morning. Um, I got quite a morning ahead of me, quite a few errands uh, after this program. Kali, Kali Dread, we see you as well. Kali Dread. And Kali says it's 4 a.m. in CA. I don't want to assume it's California. Where is CA? Do let us know. Carly Dread, 4 a.m. in CA. Thank you so much for being up with us at 4 a.m. Mabel. Good to see her. Mabel. Mabel. Good. Magnell says she doesn't make any uh, New Year's resolutions. Yep. Janet Waldron, we see you as well. Yep. Margaret, I was guessing was California. I didn't want to embarrass myself. I didn't want to embarrass myself. Folks, I got my whole cup now. Matter of fact, I got two. I got two. Another very special person. Send me another one. I can show off with that one shortly. Hold on. Give your name and credits and everything. All right? I got two cups, folks, over the holidays. And I love, I love all of them. I love all of them. So I want to thank the folks who made it possible. Let's drink this little black tea here. <laughs> folks, happy to have... All of you with us this morning. Happy to have each and every one of you with us. A number of things we're following this morning, folks. A number, a number, a number of things we're following. And we again, we're happy that all of you are with us. Kyle, Kyle Bino, how are you doing? Folks, Sharon McPherson, I have missed all of you. I've missed uh, talking with you guys. I've missed 
a hearing from you guys as well. But you know, if we can go, we can't come. It's expedient. Now we go, if we can go, we can't come. And though we did getting some rest, most of it was just to work and planning for the new year and getting information uh, for you folks. Um, lots of things happening in Letem. As you guys know, we were in Region 1 in November, close to the border there at Embatero and Yarokita, and we were um, in Region uh, 9 um, into the weekend here. From Wednesday of last week on to Saturday, we were in Region 9. We didn't play, we didn't relax in. We were pursuing the truth wherever it leads. Valid and credible information, folks. We have such a beautiful country. We have such a beautiful country. Margaret, when you and Rio come, we ain't sticking up in the city. Right? We can go pursue valid and credible information. So let Rio warm. Keep, keep the camera warm for us. Valid, credible information all the time. Veronica and Ravi and all the other folks. Good to have you on with us. Ravi uh, Dirup. Uh, good to have you here with us. Rastaman. Good to see you as well, Renella Garnet. Happy New Year to all of you folks. Happy New Year to you and your families. Uh, last to share with you guys this morning, and why don't we get uh, right into it? Smash that emoji button for us. Share the live, good folks, and let me go down the road. <laughs> Hope you guys are well, and if you're not feeling too well this morning, you're in our thoughts and prayers, and we pray that you guys get back to full health very soon and very shortly. You know. Quite a number of things we're following, folks. Quite a number of things. And this year is like last year, 2.2. It's like last year, 2.2. There's more fires. There's more drug trafficking. There's more narco trafficking. Narcotics trade, 2.0. Carnage on the roads and waterways, 2.0, folks. National Year of Prayer. It's much needed. Much desired. Happening in the morning papers. The headlines, I think, uh, say it all. Lots, lots happening, folks, with the morning papers. Short turn for uh, 116 million, 161 rather, million New Amsterdam hospital. We can talk about that. We can talk about that, folks. Government must allocate resources. That's the book news. They start turning. And then, as you see there, uh, the fast news, Couture, Couture, I mean, Couture News. Kaichu News main headline, government must allocate resources in budget 2024 to settle uh, U.S. 214 million audit dispute with Exxon Mobil. Yeah. Where the money going? Where's all this money going? Folks, we've had three statements out of Irfan Ali, President Irfan Ali, since the year started. We had this New Year's address he was back on air on the second and then i think on the fourth of january he had, he had another statement out we gotta examine those as well if you hear the hurly flurry things in it but when you look and see how much money we've gotten thus far uh, from our oil resources it begs the question where all this money going elizabeth howard Lorena Alicop, where all this money going? It's fascinating. Those are some of the headlines, folks. Making the news this morning. How are things at your end? How are things at your end? You know, we often ask for you to drop a headline in the comments, especially those of you who are in the diaspora, of what may be happening at your end. I realize lots of you don't watch the news by your, your side, you know. A lot of you don't read the papers by your side. <laughs> Do let us know if you flip through the pages of the morning papers at your end. You've had a peek at the news at your end. What are some of the things making the news and making the headlines at your end? Yolanda says it's coal in Queens. Yeah. The Lord fixed the bugs of the habitation. Me knows who sent you till there. The fantastic weather here. Folks in Latem, oh my God. The drive from Latem to Karasabai, you should see the mountain ranges. It was hot. But if you catch some shade on that tree, folks, the breeze, my God. My God. You know, Member of Parliament, Vincent Henry, 
went to let him as a teacher in the early 70s. It was for a short stint. He left yet. I understand why. Beautiful people in Region 9 on the whole. You know, beautiful people. Next trip, I got to go farther south. Deep south. Want to touch Anna and um, Sarama and some of those beautiful, fantastic places. But we had a good look. We had a good look at Letem, a good look at some of the um, nearby areas, and we love it. Beautiful drive from Letem to Krasnabai. It's good distance. A good 60, 70, 80, 80 miles. I'm out, and this is nature at its best. Rugged, rugged terrain. Love every bit of it. Folks, you must see some more of this country. Those of you who own the diaspora, what's the planning trip? You ain't coming to lock up in Georgetown. Don't even tell your family you're coming. They want to bring in chocolate. You're bringing a new shoe, a dress. Don't even tell them you're coming. And head to some hinterland area. We got so much beautiful country um, to see. Right? right? That's why the Venezuelans want it, you know. That's why the Venezuelans want it. Folks, there's a second meeting plan. Yeah. The Argyle Declaration wasn't enough. Yeah, the St. Vincent and Grenadines meeting was not enough. There's a second meeting slated in the coming weeks. They're going to be heading to Brazil. Who knows? That might be there as well. You all know how we fast. Right? You all know how we fast. And as you ring lead, I got to lead by example. I didn't want to tell me what happens in Brazil. And they could time it with the carnival. Let me make one thing. Have a big excursion. Raximan, Tommy, Debbie, Anton. See? Pam Halls, all the way in Rio. For the talks, mainly. Then for the carnival. Secondly, it's Portuguese or Spanish speaking Brazil. Huh? <laughs> we gotta we gotta uh, we gotta brush up. You see? I'm learning no Espanol. <laughs> so we gotta brush up. Jacqueline Johnson, Lyndon Gill, going to have all of you guys on the live this morning. Folks, I did tell you, 2024 is much like uh, 2023. It's 2.0. 2.0. And let me give you all this early. We are eight days into the new year. Brace it over. Lyndon Gill, Jacqueline, Marshall, we have you joining us from around the world. We're happy you've joined us. You're coming the right time. Boom. Right there. We are eight days into this new year. 2024, we've had nine fires. <laughs> Debbie, Stan, and Clinton. Veronica Primo Rollins. We are eight days into the new year. And we've already had nine fires. Then even the fire service have had to come out and uh, talk about this spike. This spike. So we've had one point. One point what? One point one? Fire for every day. We've had for the year. Nine fires in eight days. Nicola Corbin. Folks, you all think that's natural? Roxanne Aaron. You think that's natural? Nicola Corbin, Tommy Gibbs. You think that's natural? Folks. We got hundreds of you are on with us. Well, I like Christian ice cream. I want hundreds more. Take the opportunity to share the live. Let's let some other folks know. Then we're back. Valid, credible information. We have had nine fires thus far. I want to go through a couple of them where they've happened. January 1, they had a fire at Lagrange. A fire at Lagrange. Our. Um, Graphic artists, like he's still on vacation. We're going to put us in graphic format for you guys. So you can see pictorially where these fires are happening. Lagrange, January 1, first of the new year. This is on the West Bank of Demerara. We're building the bridge, the new Demerara Harbor Bridge. <laughs> you go from region 3 to 4. Lagrange, just over the Harbor Bridge. First day of the new year. 
fire. Yeah. Then on 2nd of January, at the Yarra Cabra on the Linden Suicide Highway, there was a fire. Right? The entire house was destroyed. A mother and four children homeless now. That's how the New Year starts. You know, I'm happy. I can put in a couple of days. I don't know if it's the same at you at, at your end, those of you who are in the diaspora, but January in Guyana, in the Pentecostal and some of the other churches and denominations, it's a month of prayer. They do 21 days and people do it. I can put a couple of days. I can't promise you 21. <laughs> but I can put in a couple. And let's pray for this country. So there's a fire January 2nd. And the Arrow Cabra, mother and her four children homeless. Port Morant, January 3rd. Two houses flattened by fire. Two houses flattened by fire. If there's no obvious, this is deep, 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 deep. Black Arts to the third and fourth degree. Port Morant, January 3. Metamir Zorg also on the 3rd of January. Five persons homeless as a result of a fire at Metamir Zorg, a two story uh, wooden concrete building at Metamir Zorg. So, two fires on the 3rd. Folks, bless it over. I come in heavy now. <laughs> I'll drink some coffee. I come in heavy. Brace it over. Right? Brace it over. Margaret says she prayed and fasting too. Good. Excellent. I ain't promising the whole 21 days. When I was younger, 21 days was like nothing. But we can we can stick in a couple days. Pray for this country. Pray for some of these rascals. Saturday, the 6th. Saturday the 6th. So I've called four thus far. The first, the second, two and the third. And that's so. The sixth, Saturday. Alone. Joyce and Roy and John Jones. Five fires. Of the PPP. On Saturday alone. <laughs> five fires. And it's as a result of this. The guy in the fire service had to come out and say, hey, you have cool down. Calm down. Be vigilant. The fire service said, five fires on Saturday alone. I sure if I ask folks like Margaret out in North Carolina, Beatrice. Beatrice, how are you doing? Good to have you on the live, Beatrice. Beatrice, are you here or there? Here or there, Donna Brandt, Yolanda Thomas, out in Queens, out in Brooklyn, Yolanda. I'm sure if I ask y'all, when last you had a fire by you, you can't remember your area. You can't remember fire in some places, most places, few and far in between. But NASA, yes, sir. NASA, yes, sir. NASA, where we are at all. Nope. So on Saturday alone, in this little two by four country, they got about 14 of us here. In this little two by four country, okay. Venezuela, one half, you won't carry but six. 14 of us here. Saturday alone, you had five. Fire Saturday alone. There was a fire of Vizelas. A house was destroyed. This is Vizelas on the East Coast. Remus Agricola. Another house was destroyed. This is on the East Bank. Some of you all will see so long you forget the geography of this country. Vizelas on the East Coast. Agricola on the East Bank. All on Saturday. Also on the East Bank at New Providence. 
a fire of unknown origin swept through a two-story concrete house. New Providence. Right. At Seafields of Fire Reserve, there was a fire there as well. A, a one flat wooden building. Raised to the ground. Right. There's raised implicit in the word raised is that it was flattened. That might be a little um, redundant there. Raised to the ground. And then at Lenora, Concrete Street. Concrete Street, they don't prevent fire. All on Saturday. Good. So we had Agricola, New Providence, Seafield, Sophia, Lenora, all on Saturday. Right? All happening on Saturday. Five right there. Vrieslas, Agricola, New Providence, Seafield, Concrete Street, Lenora. Five fires. All on Saturday, folks. We got thrown down. <laughs> we got thrown down. This fire at Lenora wasn't a building. This was a car. A car. They said it was a black, uh, well, a van. A black Nissan. Right? A black Nissan. Went up in flames. The fire started after a ruptured fuel line came into contact with hot engine components, ignited and spread to the entire bonnet and car. Yeah, just like that. Five fires, one day. So nine fires in total in eight days. We're going to keep on top of it, folks. So we know how to pray. <laughs> Vesta Hardy Rajkumar, Bushmaster, Marcia Jackman, John Jones. So those of you who are in fasting and praying as the new year begins, you know, help us here. Help us here. Too many fires. Be vigilant. When I'm leaving home, I always turn back. Plug out the iron, the microwave out. You, know, you believe you have me, plug out the fridge and all. Who vex vex? <laughs> Be vigilant, folks. Be vigilant. Huh? Be vigilant. I see people on the bed, they got the charger plugged in, wrap up in the wire, wrap up in the sheet. Folks, <laughs> be careful out there. Be careful out there. Extra careful. So, nine fires. In five days, believe it or not, yeah, nine fires in five days, believe it or not, that's how it went down, folks. That's how it went down. Some of the other things we want to share with you guys this morning. We told you 2024 is 2023 2.0. They found the contractor dead in Buxton. And he is assumed to have fallen because they, I think they said the um, post-mortem examination noted that there were some lacerations to the head. So he is feared to have fallen and hit his head badly. That's what the folks are telling us. That's the assumption that's being made this morning. We want to see our thoughts and our prayers and with his family. There's so much already happening. Young contractor. Young contractor. As the graphic tells us, he's from Grove and was working at a house in Buxton when he's presumed to have fallen and hit his head. And those are some of the things we're following on that front. I'm trying to find my... Some of, some of the comments distracting me. Yep, trying to find my, my place in my notes. <laughs> so as I said, 
right? And this we can put under health and safety. We see far too many contractors taking far too many risks. People are working in construction without harnesses and um, without requisite gloves and uh, safety helmets and so on. Far too many. There's a 3-0 that is, I think, who are remanded uh, based on some marijuana, ganja, weed, found at Yarukabra. It's still a very, very small amount that's permissible by law. Very, very small amount. Right? Very, very small amount. But a lot of people in a hustle because things so tight, you see. A lot of folks are in a hustle. And this is much of what we saw last year. I was fighting a whole marijuana. She said, Big Sahib, just trying to make a hustle here. Things are rough. Big Auntie trying to bring in something else for the family. Saw a lot of it last year. Well, of course, we say, can't do the time, don't do the crime. So three persons were held based on this ganja find at Yarra Cabra on the Linden Suzdike Highway. People just want to ease, they want to be taken out. They won't think about the hardships that beset them locally. And what we've heard thus far for this year, it's a lot of talk about easing and cushioning, cushioning the high cost of living. But that's just what it is. It's a lot of talk. A lot, a lot of talk. Folks, the Chelly Jagan International Airport has been undergoing repairs, a repair project for about 20 years now. And so we laughed at our <laughs> when we saw that they're undertaking additional infrastructural work. They're like a cash cow for the PVP. In the last three years, numerous times the Minister of Works, the good bishop, Juan Agil, marched up the CGIA no more deadlines this project got to finish by this date and that date no more monies no more extensions and then lo and behold two days later extension granted more money on the way this is another one of the failed projects of the People's Progressive Party Civic why we accept it as a as a failed project and like Guy Suko, we just keep pouring money into this. Just keep pouring money into it. It's one of the ugliest airports we got, honest to God, in this region. They build a piece here tomorrow to wake up. They build on another piece. Of, they break it down two weeks later and build something else. It's not a posh airport. Don't let me... We got some clean floors and counters in some places. But aesthetically, it's not. And they approach you look and say, oh, oh my God, when you see it from the outside. Like, oh. It's not. It's not one of those. Right? Could we be honest in 2024? It's not one of those aesthetically beautiful structures. You look and say, it's like the Barbies Bridge. All the views out for sport. Right. They're going to build back the exact structure that is in the Demar Harbour Bridge in Barbies. And I'm certain when the Demar Harbour Bridge was built back in the days, it was a wonderful design of that era. But now, now you, you got a chance to build a bridge back. You're building it exactly like the Demar Harbour Bridge. You could add a couple things to bring it up. You know how. Bring it up a little bit. 
प्लीज एंड थैंक यू सो दस ना दर्मिस बेच ऑफ कोर्स इन दिस इयर ना Any city by the itself, he just said, "Boom." Places you must visit in Guyana: the Barbies Bridge. See, could be honest in 2024. You ain't go taking no selfie or yourself in front of Cherry Jacket in Nashville. Look, look, look we airport. Boom. Right, and this is a skill we gotta develop. The new roundabout. And Eccles there, this bank extension road, this bank extension highway, the roundabout at Diamond. There are nice roundabouts, right? But they all miss that wow factor. They all miss that wow factor. It's like when you're going marry big house. When you burst that door, you step in that living room of that palatial dwelling. That's why you're doing Christmas, man. That palatial. Let's drink this little coffee. Right? That palatial dwelling that Margaret has. You you get a wow effect, right? Because Margaret wicked. Margaret and Rio took the time. Margaret mostly. And went and handpicked everything in that house there. Huh? And I remember when I was growing up, there was a, a magazine used to circulate in the region. It came out of Trinidad and Tobago. I think name name Mako. Mako is when you're talking, people name, I think, in Trinidad. That's the what a word means. You Mako somebody. It featured a lot interior decor and so on. And I used to be like, wow. Look this house here in Antigua. Look this house here in Tobago. Look this. You're minding people business. Fascinating. That's Margaret House. Got a wow effect. The roundabouts are nice. You know, I see some brides at the roundabout in Eccles. See what looks story here. <laughs> you know, but that man is real king. You know. Here we see roundabouts in some places in the world. You hold your head in shame. So my God, what we do here? <laughs> we could have done better. It it lacks that wow factor. One day pass, the fountains are working. Next day pass, water spraying. I feel like the water too fine. It's like mist. So we missed that wow. <laughs> that wow effect. You know how we miss that wall effect. As a matter of fact, yesterday I passed there. As we on the Cherry Dragon International Airport, and um, it lacking that wall effect. We've gone on to talk about some other things that lack that wall effect as well. I saw some free Palestine flags flying high at the Eccles roundabout. <laughs> yep. The flags kind of bring it up a little bit. The colors, I think it's red, green, and white. <laughs> but you need a, a lot more to bring it up. Lock, locking that wow effect. And here, folks, they're talking now about the access to water. And more importantly, portable water. 97.3. <laughs> Nationally access. Well, they're probably coming in the middle of 97. All right? They probably came into government, this current government, August 2nd, 2020, a middle of 93%. But this is one of the complaints we heard about. But we have it right here in uh, Region 4. All right? Right here in Georgetown, as that matter. People not receiving proper water through their taps. Healthy water through the taps. So you could imagine in a place as far as Region 9, what the complaint is going to be. You can imagine. Right? Well, the folks there got their own, um, they got some well system. It's not the perfect system because that water is not um, 100%. 
And as we boast development and high income and high income country and biggest GDP and all of that, we got to up our game in this regard. So don't believe this 97.3% at all. I see Naomi Drucker who has joined us. Naomi, how are you doing? Naomi said, air fun missing that wow effect. <laughs> I didn't say it. I tried to start the year very, very thing. But Naomi said it. Naomi said, air fun missing that wow effect. Government says, portable water. Nationally at a 97.3 accessibility. I probably saw the, um, what would that be? The 2.7? I probably saw the 2.7 there in Region 9. <laughs> that could be the argument. 2.7. That's probably what I saw in Region 9. And then they're telling us that the sun has been turned. As I said, I think we saw this on the Sabbath News newspaper cover. For this 161 million U.S. New Amsterdam hospital. Right? The structure of the old hospital was a classic design. I hope they try to incorporate some of that in the new hospital for New Amsterdam. I just hope so. You can cooperate some of that. Um, I want to use the word old fashioned, but that classic design, colonial design, I think it may have been, in what we're going to do next. Right? Lots of projects happening like this. They want to build a new hospital, they want to build a new school. I did say to you folks as we engage other broadcasts and other programs, you're going to see more of um, my trip to Letem. But there's a school at Krasibai, the Krasibai Secondary School. Okay? The Krasibai Secondary School is stalled. That project is, is, is stalled. You see in a subsequent broadcast, I talk about the Payara Bridge that bridges uh, South Rupununi to the north. Stalled. So, while I'm very happy that we want to move in the right direction by bringing modern facilities, not with the money out of Freedom House, but the money out of the wealth of this country. And while I welcome that, I'm very reserved in my expectations. Very, very reserved. Because I saw it by own eyes. A housing project. It let them stall as well. And that's why we say they're installed. It's an installed government. They're in, but they're stalled. Payara Bridge and the Krasibai Secondary School, that housing project there in Letem. There was an editorial in the papers on Saturday, Starbuck News in particular, Skeldon 2.0 that highlighted some of these tall projects as well. So why I welcome the start being turned at the New Amsterdam Hospital. I hope in two, three weeks, they're not telling us that the project stalled. Too many things in this country stalled. And it was stalled for a long time. He stalled for a long time. Kwame, well, he permanently stalled. He permanently stalled. 
And this is how it goes. So this editorial out of Tabak News. Scale them 2.0. Cemetery Road and Conversation Tree Expansion Projects. Behind schedule or install. They like to be behind, you know. They like to be behind. School Night Ukraine bypass. On the West Bank, Demrara. Still there, behind schedule. The Linden to Mabura Highway. This is the install government. The new Demrara Harbor Bridge. Yep. They don't seem to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time as former U.S. President Barack Obama says it's required of leadership. They got now to walk and chew gum. So why they got to go and cut ribbon and stop and um, and um, turn sod? A lot of things stall up. A lot of things stall, stall, stall. Behind, behind schedule, behind schedule, behind schedule. Too many things, folks. So we're watching it. We're watching it. There's a couple pulling out for you there. Anug. You know they got the journalists. Anug got about 10 small parties. The like whole one seat. And they got some ways to go. They knew. I want to knock them. It's too early in the year. Right? It's too early in the year. So, love you, Anu. <laughs> I'm going to try to be kind as the new year starts. But they're sending... I'm happy they're taking... Um, they're taking... Whatever the, the, the young lady's name is. Right? Don't waste our time. Next. So, Antia... Altia King is coming as the next MP for the join the list parties, but 10 of them make up this join the list confabulation, and they have one seat in the National Assembly. And we are looking forward to having Altia King there. See, I'm trying to be nice. Looking forward to having Altia King there and working with this new MP. Right. The other one come and she was quiet all the time. Doctor, whatever her name is. See, that's the impact. I can't remember her. Can't remember her name. You gotta come and bring something. Eh? You gotta bring something to the table. For the couple of months she was there, she just quiet. Quiet all the time. A couple of times she spoke, you could tell she's supporting them boys. She's supporting them boys. Why don't you come and she gone? In quick fashion. Quick fashion. So we're looking forward to Algie King. Don't know much about her. Never heard about her before. Never saw her before. Right? But with my MP hat on, we welcome her to the National Assembly. We welcome her. Glenford Gordon said, Who? Alji King, man. Alji King, that's that's who. We welcome her. Right? Do your best, Alji. Don't come and you, you get in the group of them boys. You come as an independent, do that. I want to hear some of the joint party views being exposed. You come in here, lost away yourself with the PPP. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right? Don't do it. Naomi says, take a turn in party. <laughs> take a turn party. Naomi trying to be nice. He take a turn party, Naomi says. Margaret says, you can't be docile in Ghana party, in Ghana parliament, rather, especially as a woman. If Margaret says, I'll tell you, take her word for it. You can't be docile in Ghana parliament, especially as a woman. Tommy Gibbs says she looks very beautiful. Tommy, I'm a happily married man, you see. I didn't even see that. 
Tammy, I didn't even see that. She's beautiful, you say? Tammy Gibbs. Anybody who listens to me got sensitive ears? Tammy says that. She's very beautiful. Very beautiful woman. I, I, I got to take another look. I I, I didn't see that. <laughs> we got to be truthful in 2024, eh? Ain't we? Ain't we got to be truthful in 2024? Tommy says she's beautiful. Right. I got to come back to that. I saw, I'm seeing the headlines, folks. <laughs> Rishi Prasad wants to know if it's his turn. Rishi, don't think I didn't see when you come on a page that I didn't agree with the PP fellow. With a committee mate. Don't think I didn't see it. But it's a new year and I'm, I'm, I'm easing into it. So I left you for another day, Rishi. Rishi Prasad. <laughs> Take a turn, Rishi. Rishi Pasal. Rishi is PvP, but he's a good guy. Misguided, but he's a good guy. Right? And we know not too long in the distant future. Right? He's going to be where he should be. He's a good guy. He's PvP, but he has a good heart. And I know personally, I have that revelation and that quickening in my spirit. That in the not too distant future, he is going to be in the right place. In the right place. That being said, Happy New Year to Rishi and his family. Rishi Prasad is in the comment section. He said he want to turn to. All right, but rock and come in. <laughs> Take a turn party. But look through here now. But look at Rishi that you're going to follow. Because you see these hypocrites. Let's call themselves the PPP. You see these hypocrites. Tell me they said that. They said they're doing a new fixed span high span bridge. A new fixed high span bridge across the Barbies River. Privately owned. And, and, and look now. Airfield and shape. <laughs> it's the gumption of these hippocytes for me. It's the gumption. Crossing the Barbies uh, River. Will become much cheaper. He probably got shares in it for that. Now how we selling it? Now they take all NAS money, pumping that ugly monstrosity. Can't bring down the cost of it because you know who benefiting from the windfall? Friends, family, and favorites. Make up the ownership of the Barbies Bridge currently. They see a new one coming, privately owned, and the cost can be cheaper. If that's no wickedness huh? and hypocritical behavior, I don't know what is. You took the Guyanese people's money. Bill Ugly Bridge. Bill Ugly Bridge. The cost of which to cross is sky high for the Guyanese people. Who should own it? The private equity in the bridge, whatever they call it. Get in the hall and they wash the money. And Guyanese pay a sky high cost to cross it. And the same people who did that coming to tell you that a new bridge coming, privately owned, Across the Barbies River, the bus is going to be cheaper. If we, folks, in this country, if we vote on issues, if we vote on issues and not on ethnicity, these folks wouldn't see office. They would never. You build a transformation project as they touted it when they were putting it up. Transformational. But the cost. The cost. You don't make it turn an MP. The bridge. The bridge. Rishi, you didn't know that. There you me. Edward. Brenda Braffitt. Glenford Gordon work. You know it's a bridge maker to an MP. Right? I can see some of you saying, wow. You can see the connection. Hold on, I'm going to drink my little coffee. In my cup. <laughs> I 
thank you big auntie from Atlanta for the cup. Yeah. Here's why. Members of Parliament get the cross for free. <laughs> Members of Parliament, you get to cross the bridges in the country for free. You know, you got your ideas as a member of Parliament, you flash it. I don't use it. Like when you're crossing the river bridge, the Linden Bridge, it's $60. I shame to flash a card to be exempt from paying $60. I shame. Right? Also, the Demerara Harbor Bridge is $200. I shame for flash a card to be exempt from paying $200. Honest to God, I shame. But the Burbies Bridge, when I see the 1900 <laughs> when I see the 1900 card, <laughs> sign a sign, you sign something, I got 10 minutes to spare. You don't worry. <laughs> huh? When I hear parliamentarians don't pay for crossing the, the Barbies Harbor, I say, all right. <laughs> I take a turn. I take a turn here. <laughs> yeah. What's the driving force? You see? You see? You got to work smarter, not harder. <laughs> well, I see. 1900, take a card. Boom. MP ID card. Right? <laughs> MPID card. Pop, 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 pop. They get the paper to sign. And, and you be true. And you be true. Magnell says my coffee get cold. Well, send the warm in the Magnell. <laughs> send the cup of good plug in and it's still warm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. The coffee cold for Twitter. So send the cup you could plug in and you keep it sizzling. <laughs> Yes. 80, and that's just a car, you know. The bigger the vehicle and the thing and so on, axle and axis and so on. The cars go up. The bobby. So they build that bridge. Bobby shouldn't got to pay an exorbitant cost to cross. And all of a sudden, they bring a private one, much cheaper, and it's going to be good for you. That's what they said. <laughs> that's what they said. Magnell is promising me that plugging cup. She says soon. All right. Screenshotting that. Screenshotting that. Magnell said soon. Folks, they said that uh, they're going to have another sale of carbon credits. Very shortly. Another sale of carbon credits. Coming out from the last sale, indigenous communities got 15%. 15%. I remember that Tusha was asking at the last Tusha was conference, how you arrive at 15%, Big Sahib? I saw Jack Neo shocked because for him, the indigenous person should be asking questions, interrogating issues. You take the little thing and you shut him out. So when that Tusha asked, what formula did you use to arrive at 15% of the carbon credits? It's all forest. We've kept them intact. We've lived that off of the land and in a very sustainable way for ages. How you come to give me 15%? Who arranged that? He shot back in his usual arrogant fashion, muttering a thing or two. People are wise and smart in this country. You know? Wise and smart. How 15%? Let's try to get another sale. Folks, this is one of the issues we spoke to residents in Latim about. In some of these indigenous communities about. Because the complaint has been corruption is rampant. The money getting teeth out. The money is a gift to the indigenous communities. Going to friends, family and favorites. We got so much to discuss about my travels in Latem. I saw a street in Latem where there are lamps at appropriate places. And in front of a house where the authorities there believe this is a coalition support, there's no light. And they told the family plain, y'all support the Apnu Ipsy, you're getting no lamp here. 
and that is the attitude when cash grants are being given out when solar panels are being distributed they started teething out the lcds funds they give to friends family and favorites we spoke to some folks on this very issue among other issues this money is supposed to be going to communities the community the village council together decide on what benefits should accrue to the community they can build something they can buy a bus a boat or what for the benefit of the community as a whole in some instances the tusha alone making the decision or he, he friends the family favorites and the flatterers to the exclusion of the village as an issue that is very very rampant in the interior in the hinterlands of this country it's an it's a issue that was raised with us as well folks as we went to um region 9. take a look and take a listen some of what we saw some of what we heard on this and some other issues folks welcome to saint ignatius village here in letem we've come to talk about a number of issues affecting residents here transformation happening they say in lots of guyana folks it seem to have stopped here this is what one resident told us you're a resident here in saint ignatius village and you're very concerned about the development that's happening here let's start with the um lcds the low carbon credits that villages have been given um, you're concerned that your village has been given, I think, $35 million. Tell us a little bit about that story and what's happening with the funds. To date, we have not seen any kind of development. Um, the only thing that we are hearing, I mean, we haven't seen it as yet, is the cassava mill or the cassava factory. So far to date, we haven't heard that it was commissioned. The other one, was the hot meal project i think that is completed the other one was supposed we are supposed to have the dump truck to date we haven't seen the dump truck um i think that is for now and i think we still have money um to be um to be updated for how, how long would you say that the village council uplifted or were, or were given this money this sum of money this 35 million dollars mm, so um to my understanding it was sometime june june july i think yeah so it's more than six months ago yes more and than you months. the villagers are saying they aren't seeing any um results any fruits mm, from no. this 35 million dollars no no Wow, what do you think is happening? Well, their time will up soon, and I don't think it will happen. I don't think this will happen. To my, to for me, for me, I think the the the, the LCDS fund should have been used wisely, not using like one. Uh, I mean, one what instead need because I don't think we need a um, cassava. Um, factory because we have one in central in Mokomoko and to date it is not being used by the by the central Rupununi. It was there for a purpose. To date I don't think it is being used. And why it isn't being used? Because the farmers doesn't plan the amount of cassava they, they are supposed to be doing. To date now we don't have farin. Is there a shortage in letter? shortage in in the region as a matter of fact because foreign is already ten thousand fifteen thousand the last one was 15. wow and saint ignatius but i had done a feasibility to see or uh, to check uh, on the persons who have farmers see how many how many acres of cassava plants do we have well maybe that could have been that would be another white elephant Wow. What else is happening in here in St. Ignatius Village uh, that concerns you as a citizen? What concerns me is, um, my greatest concern is the cattle ranch. 
we have a village cattle ranch which is being abandoned at present moment to date we are not hearing of any cattle being um i mean update of what is going on in there because i think it was abandoned a couple months ago and that was our priority project in the 2015-2016. In 2016, we had um, a jubilee grant of 15 million and we spent that there. We had a little 5 million, that is how it came and we were going forward all the time. And since this village comes up to cover, there is no, no progress at all. Wow, but when you listen to some of what, um, central government is talking about you hear about all this transformation and that's happening and so on mm -hmm. but it seems to have missed saint ignatius village saint ignatius village alone is not on the on the wherever You're it's not, not on the map it is not on the map and we are near to the town why do you think that is so to my belief maybe the administration is not doing what they're supposed to be doing they would let they would be left behind because they don't attend meetings they don't attend forums where they're supposed to be going to for example we have our roads internal roads you call and nothing is being done because during our time we um we we budgeted for a baku or baku or whatever it is and a dump truck to do our roads so that we will not depend on the government or whatever. So they, the Baku is there doing nothing. We had a lot of plans for that. The dump truck hasn't reached us yet. You've, you've, you've lived in St. Ignatius um, for a very long time. Yes. You know this community by Not heart, you love it. it. What do you want to see happen here? You know, things to go right. Things to go right. My, I know, for my plan, I would have put in my plan, my um, project, uh, my sustainability plan is like, I need to see, especially the health wise, not for me, for my younger generation to come. We need to have it modernized there as a smart hospital because we will not be, be depending on Rupununi or Region 9 Hospital, because that is Region 9 Hospital, not St. Ignatius. Because I won't be going there and taking hours to see a doctor. That is the reason why we have a health center here. And we want it to have like laboratory, the like maybe just like a big hospital compound there. We have space for that. To have a um, child, um, let's call it child, different, a bigger hospital and to accommodate um, the sick people Excellent. male ward female ward um maternity ward and so on we can talk about it what are, what are your thoughts about the other things happening in the region um if at all job well job well likewise it would i mean if these things happen you can get the, the persons in the village can get jobs there because mm -hmm. i see so many of them are um are going on the courses or on the training for nurses doctors and so on and you don't even know where you go with them wow um you said that uh that you believe that the time of this administration is is going to be short yeah it will be short and they wouldn't have time because next month is on the last vgm that is a very general meeting which will cover everything to win the award and and that is it mm -hmm. the last one yes is the, that is the that right. is almost my before, talk to us about that before i mean in any any forum i go to i always request for that and and that is the the extension land for St. Ignatius Kumu and Quarry. And to date, we have not heard anything because I saw our, on the media, we are so far and yet we seen things. We are not, remember they have this um, ALT or whatever you call it. 
and Bryce Armour in the title and lands so much money was given. And up to that, I haven't seen the reach. What has been the progress in terms of over the years? And and where do you think the process is now with the titling of the lands? So far, here? we don't know. So far, I don't know as yet, and we don't know because in 2019, I think that was in um in August when they had meeting in in Georgetown, the two shows. We were not on the list, but we we according to information now we were on the sixty eighth list and to date we have not heard anything. But we made a little um agreement at that time as was up no time. They came in twenty nineteen December I could remember that uh, remember that. We signed an agreement with Mokomoko and um Saint Ignatius Kumu. So that is where we are so far. I don't know what is the reason why they don't want to give us the title on. And that would be so nice if they gave us all of that. Is it something the village council is talking about or maybe um, at the regional level? They don't really target at regional level yeah, because remember the regional wouldn't uh, think with that. It would be more upstairs with the minister. Mm -hmm. but, and, but is it something that the, that, the, that the village council might be pursuing on behalf of the residents? They're supposed to be doing that. But it's, but it's not happening. It is not happening. It's very sad. Very interesting. Who is the Tushau here? Um, it's a um, Tushau Will Florentino. Excellent. All right. Thanks again for joining us and letting us know your thoughts. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. That's all we have for you. We're going to see you guys on the next broadcast. Yeah. There you go, folks. And we're talking with our sister there in um, Region 9, St. Ignatius Village, and the issues that concern us, the LCDS funds that are not being spent correctly. Uh, there's already a cassava factory in Latem um, and Central Latem that's not even being used, even though there's a cassava shortage because it was an APNU AFC project uh, with some funding by um, international agencies. It's not even being utilized to prevent there being a shortage of uh, um, not only cassava, but farine, the main staple that comes from cassava. And in St. Ignatius, they want a cassava factory. <laughs> so this is saying this is, this is madness. The other issue that's being raised there too, folks, um, you heard it talk about internal roads. Uh, it was promised that they'd have a village cattle ranch. She said she don't know where that is at. Right? She talked about also about um, uh, land titling, very important. The process was started under the last administration. They've abandoned that. They have abandoned that. But that's going to do it for us at this end, folks. Until our next broadcast, uh, thanks for joining us this morning, folks. Valid. Credit building information. Before you go, smash that emoji button for us, folks. The like, the heart, the thumbs up. And let us know how you guys are feeling there. Share the live as well, folks. And when we say partner with us, no money coming to fill our pockets. This is what we do. Pursuing valid, credible information. Our sister asked us to uh, preserve our identity. She didn't want uh, no confusion with these jackabouts. And you, you, you know how vindictive they are. Right? You know how vindictive they are. But this is what we do. We got to pursue the truth wherever it leads. And this is what we use um, your funding to do. So help us, folks, to keep moving forward. Thanks for joining us. That's going to do it at our end. Stay safe. Until our next broadcast, folks. Until our next broadcast. Stay safe. Naomi and Lennox, Yolanda, Edward, Paulette. Good to have you folks on the live this morning. Uh, all of you, the hundreds of you. Who joined us? Sorry, can't call all the names. Sonia Masikov. Got to call Sonia. Sonia, good to see you. Happy New Year to you and the family. Mr. Jackson, I see you there. <laughs> I see you there, Mr. Jackson. You know, joining us from uh, the Rupununi as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm coming around to the issues at your end soon enough, Mr. Jackson. Coming around to the issues at your end. Bantu King, Brenda Moore, and all the other folks joining us. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, stay safe, folks.
Stay vigilant. You know, and alert as the Guyana Fire Service has encouraged us to do. Stay safe. That's our time. That's a